Can't find a Beretta 84, SDS Imports, and TSOSH heavy save with the Fatih B380, a licensed clone of the Beretta 84. That's what we'll take a look at next, coming up on GB Guns. Now, in all honesty, this gun's already been out of the box and already been to the range because we got excited and impatient. <laughs> Here's the gun. You get the second magazine. These hold 13 rounds. The reason we were so excited was because Tia originally wanted a Beretta 84 and we couldn't find one. She ended up getting uh, an FN kind of similar uh, old surplus gun. You have a cleaning rod and a nice brush. Take a look at the manual. And uh, that's been one of her guns. It was one of the first that she purchased since we've been doing this together. But we couldn't find, look at that, explanation of a squib load. It's nice. Images are alright. They're the sketch type, it's your standard four color print. Get that out of the way, take a look at the gun. So anyways, couldn't find something like this. And uh, she ended up with something else. And now SDS Imports has one of these. This is, as you can tell, Beretta Styling. This is a licensed clone uh, with the open top show clear there and a fixed barrel 13 plus one rounds of 380 all in a manageable size I say manageable because although some people would say oh that's kind of big for a 380 yeah but those tiny 380s aren't any fun to shoot <laughs> so having a little bit of extra breadth there an extra size makes it a lot more comfortable to shoot let's uh, get on with our standard format Walk around the gun. Starting up front, a little bit of barrel to slide plate, which is kind of interesting because it's a fixed barrel. Uh, do you see gad rod there? At least I believe it to be a fixed barrel. We'll see when we pull it apart. Classic Beretta styling with that kind of scalloping there. No rail spot and appears to be a fixed front sight. Very classic smooth along here. Controls easily within reach for me, even with my backwards thumb there, I can activate the safety. It's not a de decocker, and this is a single action, double action, meaning you've got single action, fairly crisp hammer fired trigger after the gun fires. You've got another single action, I'll show you that reset. Kind of kicks you out, but let's say this is a gun that has had not the best maintenance, including the ammo in it, sitting in a truck or a bag or something like that. You can pull again for a second strike on that round. That's what I like about SADAs. But you can carry it, cocked and locked. I'm not sure I would trust the safety of carrying it, uh, of manually decocking it, but that's up to you. No undercut on the trigger, here, trigger guard here because our mag release is right down there. It does certainly kick those mags out, and it looks like the magazine release is reversible. Vertical texturing on the front strap. I'm more of a fan, or prefer better, to have the horizontal, since the gun is trying to rock this way, not side by side, side to side. Interesting grips here, they are a little broad. You can see they swing a little fat there. Coming underneath, we have a squared off magazine well. No worries, when you have a double stack single feed magazine like this, your magazine is your mag well. The pinky rest lets even me get all three fingers on the gun. Slide to frame fit in the back is very tight. Our sights, rear sight is dovetailed. We've got a rear dot front dot system, kind of interesting, uh, you'll see more on that in our shooting impressions video. Nice serrations on the rear of the slide, external extractor, and your takedown lever. Next we'll field strip this thing and take a look inside the gun. Now to field strip this guy, I do want to point out there's a slight variance from what's said in the manual. It refers to pushing on a button on the right side of the gun. I found they actually mean the left side of the gun. I'll show you how in a second here. So we're going to check for clear. 
really easy to see with that slide. Nothing in the magazine. You're going to push on the left side this little button here. Let me come in a little closer for you. Push there and rotate this lever down. Once that's down, slide comes free from the gun. Looking inside here, sorry it is a little dirty. Like I said, we got it right out to the range. You can see we've got nice long rails to support a good solid ejector. We'll remove our recoil assembly, which is a non-captured but steel rod. Excellent. Non-captured, yeah, it means that uh, you got to make sure you don't lose that thing. But that also means that we've got uh, the ability to tune it if need be. If you want to run a heavier spring or softer spring, there's a potential to swap those out. I'm not saying that someone makes them or not. Uh, here's our barrel. Very simple. We can tell that we obviously don't have a fully supported chamber, but that's okay. Glocks get away with that. Almost a four inch barrel, which excites me about these because you're going to get a lot more energy than you will out of your pocket 380s. And taking a look in our slide, looks like we do have a drop safety, that little plunger in there. That gets pushed up on while firing, which means decocking this thing manually. As long as you hold on to the hammer and drop it gently, you should still be okay. So you can carry this thing in double action with the safety off. Put it back together, drop our barrel in, get our guide rod and recoil assembly back in place. I can remember where it rests. Feels like that's not the right spot. Just a second. You guys are seeing this first time experience. There we go. Now, in getting this back on, you gotta start way at the back. Bring it to the rear, and looks like we've got oh, our barrel sitting a little high. So I pushed it down to make sure the barrel was tucked in there. And you're gonna want to actually push on the barrel to keep everything in place. Push on this button on the left and rotate the lever up and it's back together. Quick function check. Fires, resets, and our safety works. Safety gives you a dead trigger. So rather simple construction. Um, not quite a fixed barrel as I first suspected because you don't see any barrel movement here. But interesting open top design that should lead to excellent reliability. Very nice finish on this thing. And even though we put a couple hundred rounds through it already, you don't see any wear, which is really impressive. Normally I'd expect to see something along the top here, somewhere from the slide moving, or some spots along here, but we're not. Uh, so very well constructed, nicely put together. When we get this to the range, we'll do our what's for dinner and run a wide variety of 380 loads through it. As I as I recall, we have 56 grain through 102 grain. Steel case, aluminum case, brass case, uh, nickel plated brass, hollow points, full metal jackets. We'll see what this thing will eat. But pretty neat to have a moderately sized gun. I'd say it's probably a little smaller than your average subcompact. You can go to SDS Imports website for the specs. I'm not going to waste your time with reading off numbers here. But uh, 13 plus 1 rounds of 380. That's quite a lot of 380. That is the Fatih, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, B380 from TSOSH and imported by SDS Imports. Thanks for watching.